Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking through the sort of potential results that we could get out from a statistical program for another regression. In this particular regression we're interested in the factors which might affect an individual's weight. One of the factors which might affect an individual's weight is, let's say, whether their parents were obese or not. So that might affect an individual's weight. Um, another factor which might affect an individual's weight might be, does that particular individual smoke? So we include like these two measures of um, parental obesity and, and whether an individual smokes. Note that both of these are, uh, in fact, dummy variables. Uh, in our regression, a whole, along with a whole sort of host of other factors, so that we don't have to worry about the fact of whether we have actually got sort of bias in our estimated results. And we sort of run our regression on our sample of data, and this is a sort of output which we get. Yeah, so we get a sort of matrix of uh, values, and in theory, we sort of get them for all the sort of other variables which we've included in our regression as well, but I'm just including these first three just so we can sort of look at those. So let's say from a previous study, we actually found that the effect of parental obesity was in fact um, equal to minus one in terms of its effect on an individual's kilogram weight. So perhaps we don't want our null hypothesis in this circumstance to be that beta one, our sort of parameter on obesity here, is equal to zero. Perhaps our null hypothesis here is that we want to have beta 1 being equal to minus 1. And though that I, I'm not sort of suggesting that this is actually the case in reality, it might well, it's probably actually more likely the case that parental obesity tends to cause children which are themselves more obese or more likely to be obese. Um, but there are a whole sort of host of epigenetic factors which could cause um, underweight children if parent, uh, parents are actually obese. But anyway, I'm not sort of getting into that. I'm more just talking about the statistics here and just providing a hypothetical example. So our null hypothesis here isn't in fact that beta 1 is equal to 0. It's beta 1 is equal to minus 1. And our alternative hypothesis here is that, let's say we might think that we want to test whether in fact the effect is greater than that. So in fact, is beta 1 less than minus 1? Okay. So how do we go about testing this sort of regime opposed to the example where our sort of null hypothesis was beta 1 is equal to 0? How can I sort of use these results up here in order to do this? Well, in fact, I can't rely on this t statistic or this p statistic as well because these t and p statistics always assume in statistical readouts that the null hypothesis is that the effect of that particular variable is equal to zero. So we would actually have to construct either manually or sort of after we run the regression, we would have to get um, our statistical program to construct new T and P estimates for that particular variable. But we can do it manually, right? It's not that difficult to do. In this circumstance here, we've got our sort of parameter, um, which we've estimated is equal to minus 1.5. Well, then if we've got enough hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to minus 1, then we just have to take off that value. And that sort of forms the numerator of our t statistic. So when I'm taking off um, minus 1 from minus 1.5, I just get left with minus 0.5 on the top because when I take a minus number, it, it adds. But then I can still divide this by the same standard error. That still holds for this uh, new t statistic. So in fact, we found a value for our t statistic for this alternative um, sort of, that's probably not the best way of saying it, but this other form of null hypothesis is in fact equal to minus one as opposed to the t statistic which was obtained under the null hypothesis that beta 1 was equal to 0. Well, what does this minus 1 mean? Well, we have to look up whether um, this minus 1 is greater in magnitude than our sort of critical value, which we look up in the t table. Yeah, so this is a one-tailed test. We look up uh, under the appropriate degrees of freedom, um, which is always equal to m minus k, where k is the number of the regressors. Um, and then we look up on 0.05 for the p-value, and typically this sort of critical region is around 1.7 for a one-tailed test. And because our value minus 1 is not greater than, in magnitude, 1.7, 
then in this circumstance, we're not able to reject the null hypothesis. So in fact, given our new data or given our sort of new research that we've done, we can't conclude that beta one, the effect of obesity on an individual's weight in kilograms, for example, is statistically different from minus one. So that's provided you with a few examples of how we do hypothesis testing in practice. In the next few videos, we're gonna talk about how we actually go ahead and test for validity of the Gauss-Markov assumptions. And we're also gonna talk about how we interpret regression coefficients. I'll see you then.